think it's impossible for us to imagine what it must have been like to be a peasant from living outside Florence to come into Florence on that one trip you may have made on that one day when Santa Maria Novella opened and you walked in and saw that Trinita. My God, that must have, that must have really hit you hard. We have the Trinita, the so-called Trinita by Masaccio. Now, you see Godfather throning majestically above everything. Uh, we're seeing the most important events in the world. We're seeing uh, a God who became a man dying and returning to his original condition. He is a person, he is a body um, among bodies. And these bodies come closer to us. They're, they're bodies like ours in a space like ours. And this, this was uh, unprecedented. And this uh, wasn't uh, some cheap formal trick. Uh, this, this, this was to give the theology the most dramatic, the most powerful, the most concentrated expression it had ever achieved. The fever of art restoration is sweeping the Western world. The process has been fraught with controversy. The dispute is between those who favour only a light cleaning of works, sufficient to prevent further deterioration, and those who advocate more radical intervention, using the full resources of science and technology. The recent cleaning of Michelangelo's ceiling in the Sistine Chapel was hailed by many as a revelation of the master's original vision. But others felt that the use of strong chemicals eroded many of the artist's final touches, both falsifying and damaging the work. Lately, the spotlight has shifted to Florence, where the high-tech approach has been demonstrated to spectacular effect on Masaccio's frescoes in the Brancacci Chapel. The project was sponsored by Olivetti, who in recent years have shown particular interest in the work of Masaccio. Un rapporto speciale, no? C'è un rapporto così come per molti altri monumenti italiani importanti. Certo, Masaccio è uno delle cose più importanti che esistono in Italia dal punto di vista della storia dell'arte. Masaccio, come Michelangelo, come Raffaello, come Piero della Francesca, sono dei punti fondamentali. Ma si dice anche che lei ha un amore personale particolare Beh, per questo, Masaccio. Questo, questo fa parte della mia vita privata, diciamo, e è una debolezza che posso confessare tranquillamente. In 1990, the Brancacci Chapel restoration was unveiled to general acclaim. Today, thousands flock to the chapel to admire what they believe to be the original look of Masaccio. But not everyone agrees. Every intervention, and this is a rule of restoration, has some loss of surface. It's inevitable. You can't muck around with the surface without losing a little. So when you go and work on that surface, something will be lost. And what is gained is a very problematic um, effort to make it modern. And of course, our notion today of what is appropriate, let's say, for the appearance of the Brancacci Chapel, is not going to be what it is 20 years from now. Olivetti have now offered to sponsor the restoration of what many regard as Masaccio's finest work. The Trinity, painted in 1426, is in a fragile condition. If Jim Beck gets his way, the new restoration will not happen. Beck has rarely been far from the center of the art restoration debate. Recently, his disgust at what had been done to a sculpture in Luca Cathedral was headlined in the Italian press. It was an outburst that landed him on the wrong side of the law. Uh, this is the tomb of Ilaria del Caretto, who was the second wife of the Lord of Luca, Paolo Guinigi. She died at the end of 1405, and after, soon afterwards, Jacopo della Quercia made this Carrara marble monument. Uh, I 
was very dissatisfied with the restoration, uh, in my opinion, an unnecessary restoration in the first place of this work, and spoke fairly negatively about it. What did you say? Uh, I said that the, the original patina, the aura of history, had been lost. It looked to me to have been cleaned with spick and span and shined with Johnson's wax. And I'm afraid I said this, and that was one of the remarks that the restorer took offense uh, about. And he did uh, bring me to court on that. I've been accused of aggravated defamation. I've been accused by a person whose name I didn't even know, uh, who, uh, whose case rests upon an interview I gave with a newspaper. Uh, it's a criminal case, and there is a imprisonment, maximum, fi maximum uh, three-year imprisonment. Do you think the outcome of this case will affect the upcoming restoration of Masaccio's Trinita? I believe that if we win this case, we have a good opportunity to insist upon a public debate before they begin the restoration of the Trinity. Many people will, be, will criticize more freely what they don't like about recent restorations. I know for a fact, if even newspaper people have been reluctant and are waiting for the outcome of this case, not to mention critics and art historians. The problem is that there is no tradition of criticism in restoration. Uh, restorers are, are rather like nuclear scientists. They claim expertise, which is denied to everyone else. And, and it's a kind of effrontery to challenge their technical expertise. Um, and Beck became a kind of threat to the establishment because he insisted uh, that criticism should be put. Well, there is such a thing as benign neglect, there is such a thing as too much care, and there's such a thing as malicious neglect. And uh, in our environment today, with the excess of um, air pollution, particularly with sulfur dioxide, which causes in Florence a rash of sulfates, gesso, to break out in frescoes, which causes the same gesso to erupt in marble statues that are left in the open, which has caused the gold on uh, Lorenzo Ghiberti's Doors of Paradise at the baptistry, to fall to the ground, um, it's irresponsible to leave them alone. Uh, I suspect that this painting should not be tampered with at this moment. Uh, the reason I'm, a, I'm hesitant to see anything, any serious intervention go on except a con conservation effort is that the surface is so fragile. And if you look at the Virgin's robe, you will see that a great deal of loss has taken place already, that the, the, uh, the modeling of the robe is, 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 is in large measure uh, has fallen away. And the same is true of this uh, figure of the donor down here, where that's all been repainted uh, and doesn't really have anything to do except as a kind of a connection with what was there uh, before. What was there before is what pretty much you see above. Uh, and it is very fragmentary. If you touch those small areas of the original, there's always a minimal danger that you'll remove a little bit more. And since there's so little in the first place, uh, any kind of serious removal will just that much more limit the power of this marvelous work. Mazzaccio was fundamental because, uh, first of all, he was the first person to use linear perspective scientifically in this painting. And that has to do with the reflection of the way that they, that they really saw the world at that point. For hundreds of years again before that, there was a, a world that was God-oriented. And suddenly the world became man-oriented. And so before, they only really needed icons, which were images which you sort of used as a kind of way of thinking to go to another world or to go to a spiritual place or space. By this invention of linear perspective, you could make a whole world inside the wall, so to speak. Tomazaccio was his name.
That is, his name was Tommaso, and uh, he was born on St. Thomas's Day. And probably he was a large fellow, is what they say, and probably a little bit direct in his manner of dealing with people. And so they called him Acho, which means perhaps something like big or slovenly or a bit direct. He probably grew up in, uh, in San Giovanni until he was 10, 11, 12. It's very hard to say. His father died when he was young, so he was an orphan. He anyway went to Florence at some point, like 10 years old, 14 years old, and probably went into a bottega. Uh, the bottega system was a system where you trained as an apprentice in whatever trade you were going to make. And then he will have uh, certainly begun to train under some other painter. Nobody's ever known who that other painter would have been. But he would have trained probably with a painter who was interested in space and interested in perspective. It's completely unknown where he would have learned fresco, but anybody who was going to be a painter would have learned fresco immediately, and there would have been hundreds of people who could have taught you fresco technique at that point. Ora incomincia a fare l'intonaco per una giornata come avrebbe fatto Masaccio per la stessa zona che riguarda la testa della Madonna. Mette giù l'intonaco, prima uno strato sottile che aderisca bene al muro, dopo uno strato più massiccio che si possa levigare da dipingere bene sopra. Che cosa vuol dire una giornata? Una giornata vuol dire una zona piccola che possa essere realizzata sul fresco, prima che l'intonaco asciughi troppo, in un giorno. Non può superare le 7-8 ore, dopodiché non è più buon fresco ma diventa un'altra cosa poi il giorno dopo uno può ritornare e continuare ma viene evitato il più possibile Masaccio stava attento a questo perché preferiva fare tutto il primo giorno ciò che riusciva a fare e dopo se mai quando era secco a secco completamente One fresco, as you know, is, is actually in the plaster and becomes part of it. And only the tempera or little soft, uh, loose additions on top may have been added. But often, uh, usually, if you're working well, you don't have to add. And I'm sure somebody like Masaccio working at full pitch, you, you know, when you look at the Giornati and the Masaccios and the way everything is painted on a certain day, and someone would say, do the plaster, and he'd come up with it. But I think when you're actually swinging with paint and you're going like he was, he was a young, very you know, vigorous guy. I think when he painted, it was that, and he came down off the scaffold, washed his hands, and that was it. It's very interesting as a, as a method of painting because also it forces you as a painter to make up your mind. You see, oil painting enables you to change your mind. You continually, you know, like late tissue, and you rub it in with his thumbs and push it about, and Rembrandt pushed the paint everywhere, you know. But fresco painting, no way. Fresco, you have the sinopio, you draw it in, up goes the plaster, and you paint. Well, fresco is a poor form of, of painting. The altarpieces are very expensive to make. Fresco is very cheap to make. There was, at the beginning of the 15th century, a, a lot of antagonism in Florence towards the very rich pope and papacy. And this was particularly strong in the Dominican and Franciscan orders and the Carmelites. They were all poor orders. So that when they commissioned paintings, they almost certainly told Masaccio to make everything poor, that this was the way Christians should be. They should not be rich. They should not be the rich merchants of the day covered in silk that came from the east or cloth that came from the north. Or... Unquestionably, this was difficult for the papacy to swallow. And Masaccio would have been very difficult for the church to understand and to accept. All through the 15th century, there are rumors that Masaccio was poisoned. If it were true, there must have been a, a motive. And the motive could easily have been that the church itself was bothered or really frightened by these extremely strong new statements.
e in quanto artista Masaccio è stato un teologo nel vero senso della parola perché la teologia non si fa soltanto con le parole ma si fa anche con i colori con le linee con le immagini con le espressioni perché la Trinità qui è vista Padre, Figlio e Spirito Santo è nella croce perché è lì che si è dimostrata la Trinità in maniera storica il mistero di Dio uno trino in qualche modo era adombrato anche in Platone quando Platone dice che Dio è il bene Dio è l'intelletto Dio è l'anima del mondo Clearly, there has to be an enormous difference between being a passionate Catholic and standing in front of a crucifixion and being somebody like myself from the north, you know, with, with a different passion. My passion is for form and art. But of course, be careful, because the passion for form and art is what really informs other painters. So the people who flocked to see Masaccio and did drawings of it, like Michelangelo and even Degas, were moved by the form of the work. And that's what the whole idea of Italian art is about. In effect, he was producing a kind of hologram. The figure is established, is made as real as it possibly could be by the manipulation of tone within the design. All these laboriously, brilliantly constructed linear inventions, this, this wonderful perspective, wonderful architectural details, and having created it, he then downgrades it, washes it over with tone, uh, so as to throw this figure into relief. This is a schematic line drawing. Um, the, the cylinder is, is, is an equivalent for the Christ figure in, in the Trinity. This is the object of focus. Um, and so the tone would be used ruthlessly to separate, to knock down, and throw into relief that which mattered. It was restored about 30 years ago, rather substantially, by Lionello Tintori, a very distinguished, he was the leading restorer of his time. Do you think he did this well? I do think he did it. With, considering the conditions, he did a good deal of repainting, uh, but it is not very offensive. Uh, as, I, as you can see here, this is all repainted, but uh, he sort of followed what he could see was uh, uh, the, uh, the idea of the artist. Ma lì, lì è un problema un po' particolare perché il, il fresco fu staccato dalla sede naturale da dove era nato, nel, fu staccato nel secolo passato e trasferito in un posto in, non adatto, fra due porte dove c'era una forte circolazione d'aria. Ma se fosse stato ancora l'affresco originale, nudo, sarebbe stato bene, ma sopra c'era residui della colla usati per il trasferimento. Allora il compito principale nel 50 fu quello non solo di rimetterlo a posto ma di levare questo strato superficiale che proprio distruggeva sistematicamente la cosa. Allora fu levato nove decimi della colla ma un decimo è rimasto ancora nella fresco perché penetrata nel colore e quello lì sarebbe il compito ora se riescano a levarla senza distruggere il colore fanno un'opera veramente utile alla fresco, se no è meglio lasciarci questa poma con la ricetta. It's impossible for a restorer working his way through the proteins, through the varnishes, the resins, the, uh, the casseins that are lying on the surface. It's impossible to know when you've gone through one stage, one, one condition of the material into another. Uh, all that you know is, is that you're, um, you're going through a certain kind of material. You can stop when you reach the plaster surface, the fresco surface, because you're on different material. Uh, but by that time, it's too late. You, you, can, you can take little tests. And if you see a, a nice pink or a nice blue glowing out of a dark, gloomy, brownish material, you think, whoopee, you know, we're, we're, we're getting there. Uh, and, and so you take off. In taking off the layers of matter, 
that have been put on the surface by whoever. You'll be bringing up the colours, you'll be seeing the design more clearly, but you would also be taking off the most vital adjustments, manipulations, concentrations of contrast. In the head of Christ in the Brancacci Chapel, you can see in the pre-cleaning and the post-cleaned version uh, quite dramatic differences. Um, the, the head looks here less sculptural, it looks less natural, it looks more like a collection of pieces of painted surface. Uh, this, this value here is dramatically lighter than that value. Uh, this alters the whole conception of the head as, a, as an object, as a plastic sculptural object turning in light and in space. Uh, we're now more conscious of this boundary, the design of the head, uh, than, than we were there. In, in this one, that side of the face is lost in the darkness. The nose is more prominent. This, this part of the forehead and the edge of the cheek is more prominent. This eye is more dramatic. This eye glints. This is a real eye looking at something. This, this has become a painted convention of an eye. The, the whites of the eye here are too equal, which has a flattening effect. It makes the picture more abstract, more like an abstract painting. The chemicals and diagnostic expertise used to clean the Brancacci Chapel were supplied by Ciremont. Ciremont is a division of Mont Edison, Italy's largest chemical company. The anionic resin has one major advantage over a pure application of ammonium carbonate, and that is that um, it can be done gradually. With the anionic resin, if applied correctly, done skillfully by a good restorer, you can take off a little, see how it looks, take off a little bit more, see how it looks, and take off a little bit more. And in theory, and I think in practice in the Brancacci Chapel, it gave a, a much greater measure of control to the restorers. Qui è un'altra scena della cacciata dal paradiso. L'impacco è praticamente già sistemato nella zona da pulire. è già stato in questa fase tolto e con il cotone ed acqua si leva tutta la parte il vecchio sporco il troppo pulito secondo me non esiste il troppo pulito se tecnicamente viene fatta bene non si può arrivare al troppo pulito posso spiegarmi in un minuto eh, noi dobbiamo riportare l'oggetto nelle condizioni in cui sarebbe se fosse invecchiato bene invecchiato serenamente come possiamo invecchiare noi uomini ecco come dopo asciugatura si presenta l'opera pulita the expulsion looks too much like a photograph now it looks too pale it looks without any great contrast the drama all focused around the faces of Adam and Eve. And now, actually, there are many centers to the picture. There's a, between the legs, you can see between Adam's legs, there's a sort of center. The angel is a sort of center now. Uh, there's no longer this concentration of passion in the moment of uh, agony of Adam and Eve being thrown out of the garden. It's diffused. And of course, great paintings aren't diffused. Even today, when a painter makes a painting, the unity is uh, given in the last few days. It's given in varnishes. It's given in final touches of color. It's given in things in which everything is brought together at the last minute so that you have a single unit. And of course, the first thing to go when you clean are these last touches. And this is even more true when a painting is five or six or 700 years old. There is a point. It does look cleaner. It looks quite different than the way it looked uh, in 1980. But in 1980, you couldn't see it. Um, yes, certain scholars who knew it very well and got very close, could stick their nose into it, yes, could appreciate Masaccio's gift. I couldn't, and a lot of other people couldn't. Allora, ciao. Oh, 
So what's the story, Jim? Well, uh, they've uh, postponed the decision until uh, the 16th of November, which is a week from Saturday. I'm rather disappointed just because it's still hanging on. Uh, I suppose nothing has really changed. This is my lawyer, uh, Nino Filastol, who's also a writer, has written five mystery novels and uh, has won prizes. I hope he's as good a lawyer as he is a writer. La tendenza a rinnovare le opere d'arte o a, a riportarle ad uno stato originario che non si sa quale sia. In realtà, come tu hai detto giustamente, ad abbellirle, cioè a candeggiarle, a rendere il senso del nuovo, è una tendenza gravissima e dannosissima, veramente suscettibile di impoverire il patrimonio artistico italiano in maniera irreparabile. The play of light and even the shiny quality that you now see is something that wasn't there before and it really inhibits a proper viewing of the work. You cannot see the detail. You cannot see the play of lights and shadows in the building of form. You can hardly see the eyes. And it is a bit bleached out, especially the lower portions are bleached out, and the upper portion is much more shiny. The man who executed that restoration on Hilaria, Gianni Caponi, said he could have very easily cleaned the statue, put a protective coating on it, and then put a false patina on it to make it look old, and no one would have been the wiser. He didn't do what he said because that would have been covering up the truth. The truth being? The truth being that, in his opinion, Hilaria is white. The marble was meant to be seen. I am quite convinced that artists uh, take, a, take into account the aging process of their works. In fact, in the case of the Ilaria, the deep indentations of the hair or the little flowers around the headdress uh, automatically uh, uh, collect uh, dirt, collect tonality in a way. And the artist knew that unless he was a moron. I don't think uh, Jacopo della Quercia anticipated that um, Ilari would become an important monument in Lucca that would be kissed by people who lost their loves, thereby eroding her lips. And I certainly don't think that Jacopo della Quercia anticipated that young students for a ha ha would often come into the church at night and make Ilaria up with lipstick and rouge. Well, I don't think Jim Beck knows about that. You will notice that the more recent rhetoric about art restoration is that it should be minimal. And that is a good thing. The rhetoric is a good thing. Uh, and it is a change because they didn't speak like that even a couple of years ago. So I believe that those persons uh, uh, concerned have made some minimal progress. But it is rhetoric still, and that is the public side. The fact that they use very strong detergents, the fact that they use what is called a pistola or a pistol that shoots pellets of plastic on statues to clean them is not minimal intervention in my view. James Beck said, do you know how they clean subway cars in New York? With plastic microspheres. Yes, but I imagine they do it at a pressure of greater than one half atmosphere, which is the pressure that Capone the restore of Ilaria used in his nebulizer. Um, I think Gianni Caponi was wrong to bring it to court. I think it should have been done in a series of public debates. I think that the court case gave a false impression on uh, what is actually going on in our restoration. In June 1992, the preliminary analysis of the condition of Masaccio's trinity began. The work was supervised by the Soprintendenza of Florence, the body responsible for the city's rich cultural heritage. Il gruppo oggi è costituito da una parte del gruppo più grande sul quale noi possiamo contare per il restauro. Si tratta di operatori che sui ponti stanno svolgendo alcune analisi preliminari, in particolare riflettografia a infrarossi 
e siamo poi rappresentanti del gruppo di direzione che riunisce le varie competenze professionali e decide la metodologia da seguire. Ecco. Ecco. The procedure consists in shining the painting with common lamps. The infrared radiation coming from these lamps reaches the surface of the painting and is reflected back towards the camera. This image is then in turn uh, stored and digitized with a computer. So you have a map of the distribution of the different pigments. On the cheek, for example, you can see it in the visible as well, but you will see it better in the infrared. Privately, they will admit that most of the tests which they carry out prior to restorations uh, are a deceit. Uh, they, they, they talk of them as window dressing. We do the tests which we want to do to justify the method we want to use, which is determined by the fashions within restoration. Uh, but we do lots more so that people will be reassured and think, oh, this is, this is scientifically validated. The, 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 the science is, um, is, is, is a red herring. The question is, how is the science applied? I don't see how there can be any question that um, looking for fissures in a fresco with thermovision by reading uh, the reflection of uh, infrared rays or using x-rays on painting can be harmful. Now, in terms of the products that the restorers are using, either to clean, to consolidate, and most of all, to protect the artworks, yes, there is a problem. On the other hand, what do you do? These artworks need to be protected. They cannot withstand the assault of our environment. They're going to decay. C'è un rischio che la, la tecnica, che la tecnologia diventi troppo importante. Sì, se è male applicata, ma se è ben usata, anche la medicina usa tanti veleni e se sbagliano la proporzione naturalmente ammazzano il paziente. Ma se è ben usata, no, è un aiuto fondamentale. Ma co che cosa vuol dire ammazzare un affresco? Ammazzare un affresco già... Eh, spellandolo, levandogli tutte quelle protezioni poi maturate nel tempo e già incidere fortemente sulla sua conservazione e questo purtroppo si vede troppo di frequente. Lei ha paura che l'intervento oggi uh, può, può um, distruggere l'affresco? Ma aspetti, lei parla della Trinità? Sì. Ma la Trinità è già distrutta. La Trinità è un mess. It's been moved. Uh, there are major losses. Um, it's not going to be an easy restoration. Uh, what, what would we touch? What, where would we begin? What would we be cleaning? What, what, what should be removed? Uh, science can't tell us. It may be spatially clearer. Um, it, it could well be that we'll, we'll see details in, in the ceiling. Um, that we hadn't noticed before. Um, the, what's, what's also likely to happen, however, is that we'll see the ceiling rather than Christ. What we're talking about is not dirt, not romanticism, not nostalgia. We're not talking like um, antique shop owners um, saying this is more valuable to see how old it is. Uh, we're not talking about distressing paintings in the way that fake furniture is distressed. We're talking specifically about values that were created by an artist for a reason um, and we mustn't do anything that jeopardizes the original work. A doctor, if he slips with a scalpel, can cut a man's jugular. It doesn't mean that he shouldn't be doing an operation. Um, these restorers hopefully are trained. Now, not all restorations is done, are done with as great care and as great attention and with the same type of funding that the Brancacci has, that La Trinita will have. I heard in Florence that the sponsors were quite anxious for this picture to be cleaned up. And since Olivetti is a, an important firm and since they've done the Brancacci Chapel, it's quite logical that they would also want a little publicity from the Trinita. I can understand that. On the other hand, I don't know that that's true. Eh, le persone non sono mai completamente contente. Uno dice farei la Trinità, no ma perché non fai quest'altra cosa? Facciamo quest'altra, no ma ci sarebbe eh, quest'altra. A un certo punto ognuno si assume le proprie responsabilità. Ma, forse... ma io, non credo, io non credo che la sovrintendenza di Firenze è così severa com'è 
decida di far restaurare la Trinità semplicemente perché questo fa piacere a Olivetti. Sì, dovrebbe cominciare adesso ormai perché abbiamo avuto il piano di tutti gli interventi da fare, gli interventi preparatori, cioè gli esami che occorre fare sul, sul dipinto e sulla materia eh, per vedere di che qualità debba essere l'intervento. Quindi il programma è stato fatto, si dovrebbe cominciare penso al più presto. The day that we know that there is a danger to the surface, uh, I suppose an intervention is necessary. But it seems to me they have the money at hand, it has already been allocated, and they're very anxious to use it. The outcome was he was acquitted. The charges were considered to have been inappropriate, and he was uh, found to have been free to express his opinions. This is Oriano De Ranieri, who was the original journalist who made the interview in Luca, which appeared in the Nazione, which is the cause of all the trouble. Uh, I think he's raising issues that need to be raised. I wish there were someone who would raise the issues in another way. Maybe you need a firebrand like Jim Beck to raise them. L'affresco sta ad indicare tutta la storia del cristianesimo, come è stato rivelato dal Cristo, come è stato predicato dagli apostoli, come è stato vissuto dal popolo di Dio. È la Madonna che qui rappresenta la Chiesa col suo invito, con questa mano, che è una delle pitture più belle di Masaccio. Bene, con questa mano la Vergine Maria, la Chiesa, ci dice di ritornare al mistero della Trinità. E ancora questo invito a ripensare se non è il caso che per risolvere i nostri problemi si segua l'indicazione che ci dà Masaccio di considerare sì l'uomo, ma non l'uomo per cui non c'è speranza alla maniera di Heidegger, ma l'uomo che risorge e che ha la vita e che è la speranza dell'umanità. Well, the hope is that one can move people through form and into feeling and responding to things, something which is ineffable and beyond, you know, part of experience, but is an experience connected with looking, which will then change your view of looking at the world and change you as a person inside. I think Masaccio would have had that sort of hope for his Trinità, plus the fact that he was also speaking directly to an audience which was totally and passionately involved in Christianity, in the crucifixion and in life after death. He was an artist that was born in 1401 in San Giovanni Valdarno, and he disappeared 1428 in Rome. We didn't ever hear of him again. Down below there is a skeleton and the inscription reads as much as uh, I, who you're looking at now, once was like you and you once will be like me. Easy philosophy. We'll all end up like that. So now we go up there to the main This is Richard ringing on Sunday evening. I forgot to tell you, Chris, that I had this deal with uh, Jim Beck. He has the idea, this is quite confidential, but it may turn out that it might be useful in the film. It's clear anyway for the moment that the restoration is going to go forward, and he has the idea to try and stop it by sending a lawyer's letter saying, if you go on with it, I'll take you to court. So that might be useful in your um, sort of voiceover, final remarks or something on the film. Bye again, Richard.